everyone, it's Dr. Karen Halpern, and in this video I just wanted to take the opportunity to share with you how I prefer to stain and glaze my Emacs restorations with the Emacs crystal stains and the glaze paste system. So um, first you can see here I already have my Emacs crown already mounted on the firing pin and I use the object fix putty to do this before um, beginning the video. And now the first thing I do is I'm going to be taking the clear crystal glaze liquid and I will just apply a thin coat over the whole surface of the crown and that will help any putty residue that might have inadvertently gotten on the crown surface when I mounted it and it also will just help the uh, prep the surface for the glaze to go on nice and smooth. So I'm going to just demonstrate that. So I'll just start from the central fossa. And just do a nice thin coat on the occlusal. Then hit the buckle. Okay. So now what I'll do at this point is I will just take a dry brush And I will just go ahead and wipe off any of the excess. I just want this to be a very thin application. I don't want any pooling. And it should just look like a thin, shiny coat. Okay, so the next thing that I do is I will go ahead and apply my clear glaze paste. So that is okay. And same approach. I'm going to start working my way in from the central fossa and just small strokes. I'm just dragging it out and covering the whole occlusal surface. Okay, and then once I get that situated, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying it to my buckle and lingual surfaces. the mesial and get all four surfaces okay now at this point I will take my dry brush again and I will just go over any margins. I want no glaze paste on my margins. Most of it is usually the liquid that might run over it, but I just want to just double check and make that. set. Okay, so this recipe that I use as far as the staining is concerned, I use pretty much on all my posterior restorations. Um, it just gives it a polychromatic look and it makes the crowns look a lot more lifelike than just plain clear. And I can use it on all of my A shades, B shades, D shades. Um, the only time I might start using some other stains on the posteriors if it's got some white spot characterizations or fluorosis 
or if I'm looking to match some tetracycline staining, but for majority of my cases, I'm able to do this recipe and it works very well. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the mahogany stain and I'm gonna be applying that into the occlusal fissures and central groove of the tooth. And the purpose of this is not to make it look like the tooth is stained, but actually to give an appearance of depth, which looks more natural. So just slowly working it into the grooves and feathering it out. And you don't want it to look too heavy. So I'll start with a couple little dots and then just slowly drag it through. And this will not look very pronounced when it comes out of the furnace. It's really just going to add depth. Okay. The next thing that I do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean my brush and I use a, a crystal glaze liquid. That's what I use to clean my brushes in between changing the stains. So I'm just going to clean that off. And then the next one I'm going to go into is the blue. And I use the blue incisal on the cusps. And what that's going to do is just give an illusion of more of a translucency and again make the crown start to look like it's polychromatic. So take a little bit of the blue and with the blue you really want a very little bit. If you're doing this with loops on you should be able to see the blue with your loops. Okay but if you're not wearing um, loops you should barely be able to see it with your naked eye. So very little bit. I might do a little more for the purpose of the video so you can actually see where I'm applying it. But just basically on the outer portion of your cusps and the occlusal third. Okay, so now the next tint I'm going to apply, I'm gonna clear my brush again. And that next one that I use is the Sunset Shade. And Sunset is gonna be applied to the gingival third of the crown, and that's going to add the chroma to that portion of the tooth. So for this, I like to just do more of a blotting motion. I'm not trying to be heavy handed with this. I won't want it to have a line where it starts and ends, so I'm just trying to stipple it on and feather it as I go, and I'm moving the crown as I go, and just working my way around. Okay, 
And now once I've done that, I will go ahead and take my dry brush again. And I'm just going to just gently around my margins and make sure that none of it is going to be over onto it. Okay, so now the last shade I like to use is the white. And with white, that can be placed on the lobes and that will give more of a highlight where the mahogany edge is depth. Now the white will give the highlights and we can also place that on the marginal ridges and again less is more just like the blue you don't want to be heavy-handed you should see it with loops but not without and then I like to take a very little bit and I will just put it on the tips the cusps marginal ridge Good. okay so that is my normal routine again some of the blue I put on a little more just for demonstration purposes but you'll see when it comes out of the furnace that this won't be very obvious where most of these tints are. Okay, let's get it fired.